I'm Mr. McBrien. This is SCH4U, alkenes and alkynes. Yesterday, we saw that using just two atoms, carbon and hydrogen, connected together by what we call sigma bonds, single bonds, we can achieve, we can construct millions of different compounds. Now, we can get additional variety, again, just with using carbon and hydrogen, by connecting the carbon atoms with double or triple bonds instead. Now we refer to those as unsaturated hydrocarbons because they have less hydrogen than saturated hydrocarbons. So alkenes, the first group we'll talk about, they contain one or more double bonds. And here's the two smallest examples of alkenes. So we have ethene, the carbons connected to get together by double bonds. And we have propene, sometimes called propylene. We can also have a triple bond connecting carbons. Now the simplest example of this would be acetylene. Now, of course, we have to have names to be able to describe these in text form, in word form. And really, the, the difference is subtle between this and, high, and saturated hydrocarbons. So alkenes and alkynes um, are named in the same way. We just add the suffix "-ene", or "-ine", instead of "-ane". So, um, we can we can identify the fact that there's an unsaturated bond with the suffix, in denoting a double bond, ein showing a triple bond. But we usually have to also give the location of that bond. So we do this, in this case, one, two, three, four. Um, we have butene. We have to tell the viewer where the double bond is located. So this is one butene. We can see that the first carbon atom is connected to the second carbon atom using a double bond. Okay, uh, and now it's time for us to start to talk about the concept of isomers. First, a definition. Isomers are compounds that have the same formula but different structures. And there are several different kinds of isomers. We're going to define three of them here so that uh, we have them all in one place. And then we're going to focus on a couple of them specifically. Okay, structural isomers. We've already talked a little bit about these previously. They have the same bonds, uh, but these bonds are arranged differently. The atoms are arranged differently such that they are structurally different compounds. Geometric isomers have the exact same structure, except that the uh, double bond is effectively rotated between two different geometric isomers. And the net result is a different compound. And the reason for this is double bonds aren't capable of rotating under normal conditions. Stereoisomers are based on different arrangements in three-dimensional space, and we won't talk about these. We'll save those for a more advanced organic class that you might take later on. Okay, now, so we're, structural isomers are pretty straightforward, and we've already chatted about those. Geometric isomers may require a little more explanation. So in order to do this, first we're going to back up and we're going to talk about the sigma bond that we talked about yesterday. So single bonds in carbon, you might recall, sp3 hybridized, so all of the bonds, four bonds around carbon can be identical. And these single bonds allow for rotation. So we see here ethane. Notice we've got two carbons six hydrogens, this is ethane, and we can see the sigma bonds between uh, carbon and hydrogen and the sigma bond between the carbon and the carbon. Now the overlap of the orbitals here, the sp3 orbitals here, 
that forms this carbon-carbon sigma bond. Notice that it is symmetrical around the axis between these, uh, between these carbons. In fact, the overlap of these orbitals doesn't change if we rotate either one of these, uh, of these carbon atoms. So if we rotate this, the, the hydrogens will move around, but the overlap of the orbitals remains the same. This implies that the bond remains unbroken, and in fact, there's very little resistance, energetic resistance to rotation in ethane or its derivatives. So what are the ramifications of this? Well, if we look at this compound, where we have on the one, two, on the third carbon, we have a hydrogen and we have a methane, a methyl group. Uh, we can say that this sigma bond connecting these two carbons permits reasonably free rotation. And so what this means is that there's no difference between this compound where hydrogen is on the top and the methyl group is on the bottom and this compound where the methyl group is up top and the hydrogen is down below. These are absolutely equivalent. Okay, in contrast, our pi bond um, is something very different. So when we have a double bond in carbon, it's sp2 hybridized and it doesn't permit rotation. So this, this is ethene showing our sigma bonds in blue so we still have this overlap of electrons here, overlap of the orbitals for our sigma bond between the two carbons. On the other hand, the pi bond is above and below the plane of the molecule. And you notice that the density, the cloud here that represents our pi bond, if we were to rotate this carbon, we'd have to sever this bond. These, uh, this density cloud, this orbital, would in fact be disrupted. So what does this mean? This means that you cannot rotate across this axis unless you break the pi bond in, in ethene. And this is a fundamentally important concept in organic chemistry. Okay, so let's go back to geomet geometric isomers then. Um, here are two compounds, both having the um, formula C8H16. And we might be asked, what are their names and are they the same? Okay, so based on what we know so far, we can go ahead and name these. Two, four, six, eight. So these would be octene. One, two, three. So these would be three octene by my uh, count on the left-hand side. And this one, two, four, six, eight. Again, octene, three octene. So they're both three octene, but they're not the same compound. So why aren't they the same, the same compound? Well, we can see that in this case, one hydrogen is is pointed down and one up, and in this one, both of them are pointed down. If this were a simple, um, if this were not a double bond here, this molecule could rotate and these would be absolutely equivalent. But because we can't rotate this, these are stuck in this conformation. <clears throat> so the double bonds then resist rotation and prevent us from in, uh, interchanging between those two compounds. And what this means is in this case, when both hydrogens are pointed down, the larger substituents are pushed against each other. They're interacting with each other on the same side of the molecule. And this gives it different properties than its uh, geometric isomer. So when they have different properties and they can't be easily converted, Simply, they're different compounds. So, the second part of that question then is how do we name them? Well, it's pretty simple. They're, both of the compounds that we had previously were 3-octene. All we have to do is communicate 
uh, whether the substituents of interest are on the same side, in which case we give it the prefix cis, or if they're across from each other, in which case we give it the prefix trans. So in this case, they're on the same side of the molecule, therefore it's a cis. In this case, they're on the opposite sides of the molecule and it's trans. So cis 3-octene, trans 3-octene. Okay, uh, structural isomers then have the same chemical formula, different bonds. For example, C18H8, C8H18, as shown here, uh, but also here. So these both have the same formula, C8H18, but they have, um, but they have different uh, structures. And these are fundamentally different structures. In order to change this molecule into this one, you would have to break two bonds, break several bonds, and reform them. Okay, so for naming practice, please spend some time on alkenes and alkynes. Don't forget to memorize the names of the functional groups that we covered yesterday. And do keep in mind that if you're using ChemSketch to help you do practice with naming, it uses a slightly different technique for alkenes and alkynes, and you'll have to be sensitive to that. Um, the difference is small enough, though, that I think it's still of use. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful night.